There are over 99 different ways a goblin speaks, but only one noise as generic as this one. Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at flipsidegaming.com and originalmagicart.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. Welcome back, my wonderful viewers. We have another game filmed at Family Fun Hobbies. Today's game has the Master of Muscles playing his Marin deck, with Trevor keeping a Reliquary Tower, Crypt of Agadim, Command Tower, Swamp, Nissa Vastwood Seer, Creekwood Liege, and Rampant Growth. I am playing the ever-enchanting Zedru, keeping a Hollowed Fountain, a Gilded Drake, a Misfilled Plains, Dak Faden, Force of Will, Tithe, and Clever Impersonator. Matt's eight and a half tails is building a sweet pillow fort, but he doesn't want to let anyone in, keeping three snow-covered plains, expedition map, Sword of the Animist, Path to Exile, and Aura of Silence. And last but not least, Mike and Mirko Vosk want to get up close and personal, keeping two swamps, an island, Pachuga Bog, Gaslord of the Fugue, Shadow of Doubt, and Wayfarer's Bobble. Mike wins the die roll and starts us off. Mike plays a swamp and casts Wayfarer's Bobble. Matt plays a snow-covered plains, and he casts Expedition Map. I play a tapped Celestial Colonnade, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor plays a tapped Crypt of Agadim, and he passes. Mike plays an island, passing. Matt plays a snow-covered plains, and he drops Sword of the Animist, passing to me. I play a Command Tower, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor also plays a Command Tower, casting Rampant Growth. Mike likes this idea so much, he cracks his bobble to find a basic and do the same thing. Mike plays a swamp for turn and passes like a true blue player. At the end of his turn, I cast Tithe to find two planes cards. Matt plays a snow-covered planes during his main phase, while I grab a plateau and a tundra, putting them to hand. I play a tundra, and I cast Wild Research. I then pass to Trevor, and Matt borrows my tundra. Trevor plays a swamp, and he casts Farhaven Elf, going to find another basic. Mike plays an Exotic Orchard, and he casts Gaslord of the Fuge. It resolves, and at the end of turn, Matt sacrifices the Expedition map to go and find Core Haven. Matt plays a Core Haven as his land for turn, and passes. I play a Plateau, and I cast Clever Impersonator. I have it come in as a copy of the Gaslord, which transforms my card into a giant pile of glare. Trevor plays a Reliquary Tower, and casts Nissa Vastwood Seer. He goes and finds a basic forest, putting it to hand, and passes turn. Mike plays an island, and hits Trevor for four with the Gaslord. Responding to the Gaslord's on-hit trigger, Trevor casts Entomb to go and find a card to put it to the yard. Mike puts a stop to this with a Shadow of Doubt, denying Trevor the ability to tutor, and Mike draws a card. Trevor then reveals his hand, and Mike exiles the Lifecrafter's bestiary, and he passes. Matt plays a snow-covered plains, and passes. I play a tap Misfill Plains and move to combat. I hit Mike with my Gaslord, doing 4, and I get to exile a card from his hand this time. At this point, we learn that Mike's copy of Virtuous the Wild hasn't arrived in time, and he had to proxy it with a sapling token, much to my dismay. I decide to exile Mike's copy of Undermine, and in my second main phase, I cast Chromatic Lantern, and then tap out to cast Gilded Drake. I swap the Drake with Mike's Gaslord, so now I have two, yay me. Trevor plays a Forest, and Nissa transforms. He upticks her, revealing Micaeus the Unhallowed, and putting the zombie to hand. Trevor then casts a Disciple of Bolus, sacrificing the Farhaven Elf as it comes in, and he gains one life, and draws a card. Mike casts Mirko Vosk in his main phase, passing to Matt. Matt plays a Terrain Generator as his land for turn, and he casts Wrath of God. I counter it with a Force of Will, taking one, and exiling Mystical Tutor from my hand. Matt then passes to me. I play my Hollowed Fountain tapped, and head to combat. I swing the clone Gaslord at Matt, and the real one at Trevor. Before moving to damage, Matt uses Path to Exile to take out my clone Gaslord. I then deal 4 to Trevor, and look at his hand, exiling Living Death. And I then go and find a basic because of the Path to Exile. I grab a basic mountain, putting it into field, and I cast Zedru in my second main phase, passing to Trevor. Trevor draws for turn and upticks Nyssa, revealing and drawing Swiftfoot Boots. He plays a Woodland Cemetery as his land for turn, and he casts Micaeus. He then casts the Boots, and passes to Mike. Mike swings Mirko Vosk at Matt during his combat step, hitting him for 2 commander damage. Matt then has to mill until he hits 4 land cards, 
and we see a decent amount of cards going into his graveyard. Mike then casts an Armillary Sphere in his second main phase, and he passed to Matt. Matt casts Pearl Medallion for turn, and he uses Fumigate to wipe the board, gaining 6 life from the board wipe. At the end of turn, I activate Wild Research to go and tutor for an enchantment. I grab Search for Ascanta, putting it to hand, and Trevor then rolls for the discard. Sadly, he hits the search, and I have to put it to graveyard. In my first main phase, I cast Dak Faden and uptick the greatest thief in the multiverse to draw two and discard two. I then pass to Trevor. Trevor upticks Nissa, putting the Woodfall Primus into his hand. Marin then joins the fun, and Trevor puts the boots onto her. Moving to combat, Marin then hits Dak because despite his great thieving skills, he's pretty poor at dodging. Moving to his end step, Trevor has Marin's ability bring back Machaeus to his hand. Mike also cracks his Armillary Sphere at the end of turn to find two swamps. Mike plays a swamp per turn, and he casts Master of Predicaments, which until Mike cast it, I didn't know existed. Matt casts an extra planar lens in his main phase, and he exiles the snow-covered plains. He then drops Aura of Silence, which kind of hoses my deck just a little bit. He passes, and at the end of turn I activate my Wild Research to go and find Grasp of Fate. I'm forced to discard Mana Drain, which is kinda sad. I play a Glacial Fortress for my turn, and I have Tic Tac in my main phase, drawing two and discarding two. I then recast Zedru, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor upticks Nyssa, revealing a forest and putting it onto the field. He then plays a high market as his land for turn, which seems like cheating to me. Trevor then drops a Woodfall Primus onto the field, and targets Matt's extra planar lens with the ETB trigger. Trevor then moves to his end step, and uses Marin's trigger to return the Disciple of Bolas to his hand. Mike plays a Swamp for turn, and moves to combat. The Master of Predicaments heads towards me, and he hits me for 4, which triggers the Sphinx's ability. Mike picks a card from his hand, and I have to correctly guess if it costs more or less than 4. I guess that it does cost more, and thankfully I'm correct. Mike then casts Virtuous the Veiled that he's had altered to look like a sapling token, and he passes to Matt. Matt draws, and passes to me. At the end of turn, I activate the Wild Research to find Rest in Peace. I put it to hand, but sadly have to discard it from the trigger. On my upkeep, with Zedra's ability on the stack, I activate her second ability and I donate my Chromatic Lantern to Matt. I then resolve the trigger, gaining one life and drawing a card from Zedru, and then draw a card for turn. I play a City of Brass as my land for turn, and I pay 5 because of Aura of Silence for Phyrexian Unlife. I then uptick Dak to draw and discard 2 cards, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor upticks Nissa in his main phase, and he reveals a Verdant Catacomb. He puts it to the field, and cracks it taking 1 to go and find a foily overgrown tomb, taking another 2 to have it come in untapped. Trevor then redrops Machaeus, and he casts Disciple of Bolas. He sacrifices the Woodfall Primus to the Disciple ETB, drawing 7 and gaining 7. He brings the Primus back with the Undying trigger, and not the Persist trigger, giving it a plus 1 plus 1 counter. With it coming back, Trevor uses the Woodfall's ETB to blow up Dak Faden. Trevor then passes, and returns Farhaven Elf to his hand at the end of turn. Mike casts Open into Wonders in his main phase, where X is 2, and targets both of his creatures, giving them unblockable, and also getting to draw a card if they connect with the player. He swings both of them at Trevor, who takes 5, and then loses half of his life from the Virtuous trigger. Mike then resolves his Sphinx's trigger, asking Trevor if the card he's chosen is more than 4, and Trevor says no. Mike reveals the card is, and he drops the 5 costing Raving Dead onto the battlefield. Mike then casts Dread Return, and he brings back his Gas Lord from the graveyard, passing to Matt. Matt plays a Snow-Covered Plains, and he casts Hollowed Burial. With the spell in the stack, Trevor sacrifices Machaeus to High Market, gaining one life. We then put all the creatures on the bottom of our libraries, with the exception of Marin, who Trevor has go to the command zone. Matt then passes. I play an Island, and I'm struggling for card draw. I cast Chase the Mind Sculptor, who also looks like he's cleared out, thanks to the lighting, and I activate his zero ability to brainstorm. I resolve it, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor draws and upticks Nyssa, revealing a Volrath Stronghold and putting it to the field. He then casts Vorinclex in his main phase, and he puts the boots onto the Praetor. Trevor then casts Sporefrog, and he plays a forest. Vorinclex then takes care of Jace, because why not, and Trevor passes to Mike. Mike plays a Bajuka Bog, targeting Trevor. With the Bog trigger hanging out on the stack, Trevor activates his Volrath Stronghold to put Machaeus on top of his library. 
Mike then casts a Thief of Sanity, and he passes to Matt. Matt draws, and he passes to me. I draw for turn, and I really wish that Aura of Silence wasn't there. I lose one life to pay for seven mana for humility, and I pass to Trevor. Trevor draws and upticks Nyssa, drawing Sidisi under Vizier and putting it to hand. He then swings his creatures at me for two, and passes turn. Mike draws and has to leave some of his lands locked from the Vorinclex dealio. He then casts Soul Ring for three, and swings the Thief at Trevor for one. Matt plays Idyllic Tutor in his main phase, which only costs two thanks to the medallion. He grabs an Ivory Mask, and he puts it to hand. The mask then hits the field, and at the end of turn, I once again activate my Wild Research to find something. I grab a Sunbird's Invocation, putting it to hand, and discarding Grasp of Fate. I play a Plains for turn, and realize everything I want to do is going to cost more than I have, so I pass to Trevor. Trevor upticks Nyssa, hitting a Grim Backwoods and putting to field. He then enchants Spore Frog with Journey to Eternity, and activates the Backwoods, sacrificing the Spore Frog to draw a card. The Frog then returns, and so does Journey, only this time it's transformed to the land, Atzel, Cave of Eternity. Boring Clex then hits me for one, and in his second main phase, Trevor casts Altar of Dementia before passing to Mike. Mike casts Liliana of the Dark Realms, uptaking her to find a swamp, and puts it to hand. He then plays a tap watery grave, and passes. Matt draws, and plays Sigil of the Empty Throne. He then passes to me. Trevor at this point realizes his altar and enchantment should have cost two more, and he taps accordingly. I pay eight in my main phase for Sunbird's Invocation. I then play in Mana Confluence, and lose two life tapping my two pain lands to cast Idyllic Tutor. I reveal for the Sunbird's Invocation trigger, but I hit three lands unfortunately. And then go and tutor for Omniscience, putting to hand. Trevor then makes a deal at the end of my turn, promising that if he sacrifices Vorinclex to his altar, if Matt kills my humility. I am against this deal for obvious reasons, but Matt agrees as his sigil making 1-1s isn't great. Matt sacrifices the Aura of Silence to kill my humility, and with it gone, Trevor then sacrifices Vorinclex to his altar, and he mills me for seven. Trevor draws for turn, and upticks Nyssa, revealing and drawing Survival of the Fittest. He then draws Machaeus, and follows up with Mike's favorite buddy, Triskelion. Trevor then uses the combo to kill me and Mike, and he plays a Blighted Woodland as his land for turn. The Ivory Mask is keeping Matt safe at this point, and Trevor casts Survival of the Fittest, and with the enchantment on the stack, Matt flashes in Aven Mind Sensor. With both spells resolving, Trevor then moves his Swiftfoot Boots onto Machaeus, and he passes to Matt. Matt draws and brings out 8.5 tails in his main phase. With the commander on the stack, Trevor uses Triskelion to kill the Aven Mind Sensor. Matt then passes turn, and Trevor activates the Survival of the Fittest to discard Farhaven Elf to go and tutor for Caustic Caterpillar and puts it to hand. Trevor upticks Nyssa, revealing and putting Avenger of Zendikar to hand. He then casts Toxic Delusion in his main phase and puts two life into it. Tails and the Spore Frog die and Trevor then casts Caustic Caterpillar, which he uses to blow up the mask, and then kills Matt with his combo. Game review time! So, some valuable lessons this turn were learned. First of all, using Wild Research while you only have two cards in hand is probably setting yourself up for a failure. I do run Replenish, but having a 33% chance of losing your answer is never great. This was actually the first time that Mike played his Mirko Vostok, and it was pretty cool to see. I like the fact that it's Demir colors, but it's not based around spell slinging or hard control. As I've mentioned in every past game, the creatures have to do something when they connect, and seeing the Gaslord of Fugue tilt Trevor so much as it did early on was fantastic. And I thought that first attack was particularly spicy when Mike used Shadow of Doubt to deny Trevor his Entomb and cost him a card from his hand. Oof. I think I and Matt suffered from very poor draws that game as we basically just sat back and didn't do very much. Unfortunately, this meant that Trevor ran rampant, and boy did he ever. It was a real treat to see him juggling Machaeus through the different zones, whether it's his library, his graveyard, or his hand, and I can't even blame him for using the Mike and Trike combo to try and finish off the game. Heck, it didn't even finish off the game. He had to fight through an ivory mask to get there. Not to mention the fact that he was playing Marin, and she was barely on the field for most of the game. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at Twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta.
This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.